the inside of my Spitfire. One person tent, you can see it's a little narrow at the bottom. Now at the end, that's my sleeping bag and feet moving around. And with the top, I got a little bit of thing of stuff there. I have a uh, Tetan Sports sleeping bag. Pretty good. It's actually handled the, the drip pretty well, even the cold. I woke up one night with my feet a little bit cold. It's a plus 20 Fahrenheit sleeping bag. Ratings, I don't know if I'd trust it to plus 20, 100%. Definitely not. But um, if I was going in those temperatures, I'd be bringing my winter sleeping bag for sure because things change really quick in those temperatures up, up in the real north, in the real cold. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm just waking up. Right, first thing in the morning, first cigarette of the day. Rolled over. Ryan came over, woke me up. And got to go, I jumped out, had a quick pee in my log johns. And in back here now, closing up my, closing up camp. I'm just getting out of bed and slowly getting dressed and um, ready to pack up my stuff. So I figured I'd kind of do a little bit of a gear run through a little bit while I do it. My uh, old mat that I loved, which was the uh, for all you older, older, older campers, uh, when the mats first came out, I bought like five Thermarest. None of them did very well. They were having valve problems back then and leaking problems. And I, did, I returned more of them than they were worth. The scout shop ordered it. The scout shop realized that I don't abuse gear and I'm just the product was kind of faulty thank you Scouts Canada alright I was the honorable mention to Peter Miller there he was a good man at that shop for a lot of years and anytime they really did back their gear well, he, he realized it was a specific issue that was nice of him <coughs> and I only got 37 minutes and 29 seconds left on this card. This has been a godsend. Now that my new, my other mat it was called the Equalizer. It was by uh, Design Basics. It was apparently a company out of the States. It was an amazing mat. It had rubberized bottom and little patches for areas of your back. It was a wonderful mat. For anyone who had one, they'll probably know I was trying to get one again because it lasted nearly 25 years, that mat, which was spectacular for my back. Uh, there's not a mat on the market that was that has matched it for, that I've laid on that I can kind of arc different pockets into my back and that was really important to me for some of us with back problems we like to arc certain areas that give us pain if, to try and get fluids back into certain areas of your back where discs can compress and long story but those mats were made for that this um sea to summit pillow it's been impressive. I had to buy a pillow with this mat because it doesn't come with a raised area for the head, like my old one. But the, this pillow has been pretty good. The only thing I can suggest doing a little bit better is anti-slip material on the bottom. They should have had some kind of patches for anti-slip, rubberized sections or. or anti-slip vinyl 
so it doesn't slide out. I find this slides out on me a lot in the middle of the night, but for comfort, it's pretty good. I don't fully inflate it. As you can see, I kind of leave it a little bit because I like a softer pillow, but rock hard, you could make these things if you like rock hard. Folds up into absolutely nothing. It's got two little valves. See the summit pillow. It's got an inflation valve. Allows air in and not out without you can let just a little bit out by pushing the little button in the middle, which is nice. Or you can pop it right open when you gotta fold her up. It's a two level valve. Most of us are familiar with these do any camping these days. I always fold it with a nice padded side in. It's a very soft pillow. It's one of the highest rated online and that's probably why I bought it that way. But so I really don't keep up on all camping gear. But I do do keep up on a certain amount of it, of course. Alright. chipmunk going crazy behind me if you can hear him he's a little upset because I can't right beside his hole but it was the only flat spot in the camp <laughs> that I could find so the chipmunk's gonna have to put his hole somewhere else because people are gonna be camped here and he's gonna be upset a lot this is the, this is the flat area it's kind of nice That's what that pebble folds up into. It's very, very tiny. You can see it's way tiny. You gotta kind of dinky around with it. It's like less than the size of my hand for sure. And if you really pack it in your bag tight, she goes way down to less. So, uh, camp mat what I went with for the summer Ecotech outdoors camp mat ultralight sleeping pad high burn and it's very it packs up real tight as you can see it's just an inflatable there's no foam in it it's no insulation but it actually has cut me okay off the ground this trip, even, even with some cold, it down three degrees centigrade. <coughs> <coughs> Not overly cold. It, it is, we have had a little bit of snow because of uh, the water at the elevation. Water, rain coming down at a higher elevation, it's colder, so the snow still maintains to the ground. Even at three degrees, we've had it this week. Last night, it was snowing a bit again, so. Oh, not, not, nothing unmanageable. Rain last night a little bit. It was raining on and off, just drizzling, so. Been a real wet week. As for me, I gotta get dressed. Oh. You can see how the mattress is. I'll kind of give you a little show of it. It, blows, it lays perfectly flat when it's uninflated. When it inflates up, it gives these little pockets that aren't bad. I can actually sleep on my side of the mattress and still not hit the ground. So it's kind of nice for side sleepers. It is pretty good keeping you off when you lay flat of course if you sit up in one area then you will feel the ground underneath my old mat was spectacular for side sleeping as well and for, you never felt the ground ever so this mat is not as good but it's not as expensive it folds up twice as light for sure and 
twice as tight. I like it. Anyways, I'm going to get off. Time to uh, get some clothes on. I, I'm sitting here with a shirt, with my two shirts on. i got to get a sweater and some pants and really get kitted, kitted out of here. I just, as you can see, I just need my, uh, my mat outside. That's my bag in there. It's, uh, I leave my bag outside and just cover it with rain jacket. That's good enough to keep the rain out of it. It's, uh, it's such a good bag. It's waterproof anyways. It's got a rubber and inner liner, and I still wrap everything in garbage bags even beyond that just to be extra safe because it's starting to get older. That bag I purchased, I think, when I was six, fifteen, sixteen. 16. My mother came with me and purchased it at Adventure Guide. Very good bag. Lots of straps, places for axes and saws down the either side of it. With hooks and hoops on the outside to hold it on the outside. Really great bag. Probably the best bag on the market I've ever seen. Camp Trails is who made it. But I don't see anything even close to that anymore so I, hey, I, when that goes I'm going to be real upset because that's got places for rifles on the outside if you're a hunter and you can put your ski poles if you're a skier it's all kinds of great gadgets to that bag it's going to be a miserable day if it ever fails I had a strap one of my corner straps getting had to get re on this year I still don't got the straps back on right because it's so intricate and coming apart, but I'll figure it out when I get home because it's been a pain in the butt this week. The weight's all off and stuff. The guy who resold it didn't really know how it went back together, so... Um, got a few straps wrong on it. I, I noticed it. I know it's wrong, but I got to get it home and fix it. It's going to take a little bit of intricate work. <coughs> Anyways, uh, time to get dressed, get moving, coffee's on. Ryan got coffee on today and yesterday for me. He knows I have a hard time in the morning, so he's been courteous that way. So, I'm going to get up and get going. Waterproof socks, which have worked spectacular this week. I would highly recommend these waterproof socks, even if you have a high top, 100% waterproof boot. These things keep you warm. They're backup. If water does get inside your boot, you don't feel it at all. These on. The only thing is, they do make you sweat a little more on the inside. You do get moisture by the end of the day, but take them off around the campfire and dry them. And these have been partially dried out, and then put them on again tomorrow. Get a different pair on it for at night, since I carry two pairs with me. They're absolutely great. And you can find deals on them online. You don't have to go to your big big box stores anymore. Online, they're selling them a lot cheaper in different areas. MEC has really jacked up the price of these. You don't have to go to MEC for them. Far cheaper to go on uh, Amazon or and look around. There's a lot. There's a lot of competition trying to sell these socks. AliExpress, all kinds of different ones out there. Check out all different kinds of shopping apps. Oh, these are still damp on the outside. The inside is perfectly dry, so that's good. I can wear them. Out, my shoes are pretty wet out there, anyways. So. Uh, it's just one of those things. Well, they're going to be wet until I get home. But I'm going to get up and brush my teeth. I'm going to put on another sweater because I'm getting chilly here. But it's stagnant this morning. No wind, no nothing. It's really just misty. Just misty, which is going to be easy to paddle home in. It should be nice and a beautiful, pretty out here. Anyways... Have a good day. I'll talk to you a little later, maybe for